Welcome back to the Lunch Pill Labs channel. This is Lola. And today we're going to dive into building a plugin for Bubble. Specifically, we're going to build a Twilio plugin for Bubble. If you are slightly unfamiliar with the tools that I'm mentioning here, Twilio is a really great API um, for all sorts of like communication processes. They have a voice API and a messaging API. And if you want to do chat, like you can do that with Twilio. And Bubble is a platform for building all sorts of full stack apps, but without code. And one of the really magical pieces about Bubble is that they have a large ecosystem of all sorts of integrations. And so if you are either a company wanting to integrate into the Bubble ecosystem to provide functionality for Bubble users, or if you're like just a community member who wants to provide an open source plugin, or if you are an indie dev, there are several really interesting and successful plugins on the Bubble marketplace where people are providing functionality through plugins and selling them to, to users, this is the kind of tutorial that you'll want to pay attention to. And also if you're just interested in Twilio and extending your apps with a little bit of custom code. So before we dive in way, way too much further, just wanna give a little overview of the features and the parts of our plugin. It's gonna be a pretty straightforward plugin that users will be able to run in within workflows in Bubble, where they can securely enter their auth token and account SID. Those are, you know, secure Twilio credentials. We'll talk about how that happens. Optionally, they're going to be able to specify a message service. I actually made this plugin for myself because I had a project where I needed to do some stuff with Twilio. And yeah, just wanted a lightweight mess like it's abstract into a, like a lightweight plugin so even if you're like a no even if you're a dev building products for others and most of your use cases are internal you're not really trying to build external products building plugins are a good way to save time across your own projects by abstracting things into you know reusable assets that you can use for yourself and then the most obvious part of the plugin will be they can format the text, who it goes to, what the from number is, uh, what the text says, any assets, all of that great stuff. And there's also a few prerequisites. In the show notes, there's a link to the full tutorial, which also has the direct links to where you can get set up. But you'll need a Twilio account for this. You'll also need a Twilio phone number, which you can register for. I think. For trial accounts, you get those for free. Messaging service, if you're interested in that piece, the way that we're going to do this plugin is that it should be, it'll be optional, so you don't really have to worry about that. And then, very obviously, you'll need a Bubble account. You also need a Bubble app. It can be the most basic, just bare bones, hit, click, new app. Uh, and uh, for the th the demo piece of this plugin, we'll build a workflow together just to show you how it works in practice. And yeah, so you don't have to do anything fancy. So with all of that said, that's kind of a little bit overview. Let's get into the fun and start building our plugin. Alrighty, so I have signed into a demo account for Bubble and we are ready to start setting up the plugin. So first thing, we'll go to our plugins tab, create a plugin, and we'll give it a name. Something descriptive because that's how we're gonna find our plugin when we are using it in the editor. Then we will arrive within our plugin editor in the general settings tab. So this has tons of different information in the general settings tab. If we were to make our plugin public, have other people use it, this is the information that would feed our plugin page on Bubbles Marketplace. And so, for our cases, since we're just doing a private plugin and this is a tutorial, I'm not gonna go through the process of filling out the description, but you'd want it to be things that are informative and help guide users into why they should download your plugin. Then we have plugin categories. This 
is going to determine where your plugin shows up amongst other plugins. And so if you did artificial intelligence, your plugin would show up with all the AI plugins. For our purpose, this is a texting plugin. So we can just do mobile and productivity. You'll have to at least put one category in order to publish. Then we get to our shared technical settings. These, This is basically where you put any information that should kind of permeate throughout the whole plugin. Things like HTML headers, like if there's something that should go on the header in the header section, like if you're doing an analytics plugin might be a very good example of this, then you'd put some code in the header. You can also define some of like the dependencies. I usually don't change much of anything here. And then something that we will change and update is the additional keys. So if you remember kind of back when we were talking about what we'll build, I mentioned that we'll have two keys that will be people will be able to securely put in their credentials and that's where we'll add that. So first key is the Twilio auth token. And we'll make the key private. What this does is it ensures that our keys only run on Bubble's server. Private keys, they can't run in the client, they're not accessible. So that helps to keep our, the user's information for the people who use our plugin helps to keep it secure because we're not exposing like secret information and API keys and tokens in the browser. We'll also do that for the Twilio account, Sid. And then shared assets and resources, nothing to do here. If you had like a logo or something, I think I most use this when, if I want to import any files or logos for like a client side element. So I can customize what it looks like in the editor. But other than that, we don't need that today. Next, we're actually going to start programming this plug in action, the logic here. We have a couple of different options. API calls, which API calls mirror pretty much exactly the API connector that's within Bubble. So if you are familiar with Bubble API connector, this plugin is the API, it's a plugin API connector version. And which is cool because if you find yourself working on a ton of projects and there are some API calls that you do often. It's often a better practice to just pop it into a private plugin instead of repeating yourself with the same API calls all the time. Plugin elements, these are generally like visual elements like drop downs or icons. Sometimes you can use them for data storage because they can hold rec like they can hold states and information and things but we will not worry about that for this particular exercise what we will worry about is creating an action to send text messages so add new action call it something send message this is what it's going to be called in our editor Action types, we have two types. Client side, that means the actions are going to run on the client. There might be several reasons you want to do that. And then you have server side. So kind of remembering from our conversation just a moment ago with the shared technical settings, if you have any private keys, they will not be available on the client. So we need to do server side. Another cool thing about server side actions as well is that you can get like return values. So if you want to return data that or information that the user can then use in other operations within Bubble, then you're typically going to be looking at a server side action. You also have categories, categories. Um, generic plugin is typically what I do. You can do data analytics payments, but this also determines within the editor what section your plugin will show up in. Now we get to do fields. One thing to 
kind of think about with this Twilio SMS plugin, we could decide to do just a simple API call here. Easy peasy. You don't really need to do a custom action. But the thing that I really like about custom actions, especially if someone who's like not you is going to be con like using the plugin, if it's for users, is that you can put, you can customize the experience in the plugin editor just a bit more, add documentation, add like help text, which you don't have in with API calls. And we'll see what that means in just a moment. So first field, a from field. This is the from phone number. In terms of like the editor, we'll do dynamic value. If we chose static text, that would mean that every time that like the users would that use this plugin would only be able to hard code values. They wouldn't be able to use any information from their database. If they had a variable somewhere, they wouldn't be able to use that. So typically I find dynamic values are the way to go <laughs> because they're more flexible. For type, we're going to do text. We could do number, but we're just going to do text. And then I'll show you what I meant about like documentation here. We're not going to make this optional because it's not optional. But if I said something like put the from phone number, then it would show up in the editor as kind of like help text. And I'll show you what that looks like. We can also put in default values to help people along if we wanted. What optional does is it doesn't necessarily make it optional in your code, but if it's, if a user has a plugin installed and it's not marked optional and they don't put anything in there, then they'll get like a issue, red error, like, hey, you need to put this in there. So it's kind of the way to mark things required, not required. It is required, so we're gonna leave it as is. Next, we're gonna put the to field, basically the same thing. We'll put our body here. This is going to be the body of the text. And all of these parameters, too, I'm just grabbing them from Twilio's documentation, which I'll put. Also make sure that's linked. But any sort of parameters from the API call or the service you're integrating into, that's what you're going to put in these fields. Last one, it's going to be optional. It's the messaging service SID. And we're going to make it optional. All right, so we've got our messaging service. We don't need anything to do with return values. This again is another benefit of a server side action is if there are things that we wanna return, we can return them here. If we wanted to, we could return like a yes, successful or no, failed. So users can do stuff with that. But for this bare bones, just getting started tutorial, we're gonna leave it alone. And now for some fun, we're going to do the action code here. We'll add some dependencies because we're going to use the Twilio module. So we will click here. This action uses node modules. And make our JSON here. Okay, that should work. Usually it'll give us a nice little error if we do something wrong, so we can just deploy it. And then we can start with our action code. We're gonna do async function instead of function. It's part of some of the changes with, you know, bubble being on plugin API 4, but yeah, we're gonna just do an async function here. And as we can see, it has deployed. So now we're ready to use Twilio in our plugin. 
First, we're going to grab our keys. So the keys that we define in shared technical settings, they're going to be in this context object within Bubble. You can see, if you show documentation, you can see kind of what are some of the things available. So I'll tell you, like our input fields, they're in a properties object. And then yes, context, it has our keys, um, context async for doing all sorts of stuff, time zones. So that can be a very helpful reference. So first, let's get the I'm just using the same name that I used in how I defined it in the shared technical settings. So the same. Cool. That looks good. Usually I won't go straight in the like action code um, section. I'll just do my thing in a different interface like VS Code. You can enter full screen mode, which can sometimes be helpful, but it just doesn't have the same linting and other things that might be helpful, especially it's okay because we're working on a really simple plugin right now. But if we were working on a very involved plugin with many actions, we'd probably not want to do it all just right here. Next, we're going to create a Twilio client because we're using their, you know, node fun package that we put down here in the node modules. And this also comes from their documentation of just how do you use their node SDK. But yes, we require it. All good. Now we're going to format our message data. So for each kind of parameter that we need in Twilio, we're putting in whatever the input is properties, input is from our properties object. So basically what this from does is like, cool, I'm saying from whatever the from is, from number is, let's take what the value of this, whatever is inputted in this properties from in the property editor. Let's see. The... Bubble will let us know if it like has trouble interpreting. We're still in the middle of things, so we can just keep going for now. And then usually if you like click into this like return values, you'll know if it's still an error. So now all, all is good. We're good with our, our, our JavaScript here. And then we'll want to optionally include the message service SID if it's provided. So let's do that. Cool. And then we can make our action.
And that's like a uh, very bas basic what's happening. We call the message, create the message. It's also going to send the message with the message data and format. And throws an error if it fails to send a message. This error is going to be exposed. Well, it's really just going to show up on in the plugin editor if there's an, an issue. So everything looks pretty hunky-dory here. The full click-to-copy snippets are in the written tutorial. And so if you do try this out, you don't want to go through just typing with the screen. You can just swipe it from there. And now we can do a fun part, starting to just set it up in, in bubble. I'm not going to actually put my like API keys and stuff in because for this, but I'll just show how it, it sets up, how to set it up. So we will go back into bubble, bubble. And we'll open up our demo app that I just made today. You can literally, it's an absolutely just blank demo app. So. You can absolutely just use a blank demo app if you just want to try this out. And what we'll need in order to test the app is to get the ID. The ID is going to be this fun little thing right here in the editor. So this is our app ID. We'll plop it in app to test the plugin. Then we can go to test app. In our plugins, now we see our SMS plugin. It's there. We've got an action, send message. And for users, they will be able to put whatever credentials that they need securely in these inputs. And then if we wanted to use the workflow, we would go into our workflow tab. Let's do an add a page is loaded event, which will happen every time we load the page. We'll do look for our send message, I think is our, yeah, send message testing. This is testing if we were to not test, have it public, it obviously wouldn't say the, the testing piece. And then kind of how I mentioned before, one of the cool things about plugins, especially action plugins, is that if there's something required that a user hasn't inputted, you get these like issues. So it's like, oh, you need to put these things in here. So it's a good, nice reminder. And then we would be able to put in things like numbers, like I'll just put a fake number. B wouldn't work with a fake number because, hey. Because Twilio, Especially if you're on the, like the free account, you would need to make sure that it's like a verified number that you're using and like sending to if you haven't kind of paid for the service. But as you can see, since messaging service, since that's optional, no sort of issue checkers. And because we do need to enter credentials and we haven't in the plugins, it also gives us this, hey, enter your API key. And it'll be there until we enter something. So if we entered something like this, this is just fake credentials. Go back to our workflows. No, enter your API key. But on page load, it would still send the message. Wouldn't send for us because this is not a, you know, real credentials. And then the final thing, another thing that I just wanted to point out too, because another reason why I like server-side actions and actions instead of the API call center is because of the show documentation. Like, cool, you got a little little help. Put the phone number. Put the from phone number. And I think that's a really fun way, or not fun, but useful way to add contacts within the within the editor for your for your plugin. And so that covers it. That is it. Took us uh maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but a low lift intro to building a bubble plugin, building a Twilio plugin, and thanks for checking it out. All right, that's a wrap. That is it. Please let me know if you try out any parts of this. Also, let me know what sort of plugins are you interested in building for bubble. Uh, yeah, feel free to put all those comments below. We'd love to hear from you.